All right, hello and welcome to this final part of this Modeling for Quake series. Before we start this tutorial, I'd like you to go into the description and grab the Pack Explorer, Krita, and the Non-Fulbright Quake palette for Krita. These will be used in this tutorial. Uh, Pack Explorer is mandatory, but Krita and the palette are not. You can use any image editing software you like for this part. I just prefer Krita and it's what I'm going to teach. So without further ado, the first thing that I want to make understood uh, is that we have been working in a somewhat colloquial scale this entire time. Um, all of our tools would work the same even if the model was scaled ridiculously or um, you know was microscopic compared to what we're doing right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to import a key that is currently existing in the game and check it against this to see if the scale is correct. So we're going to take the gold base key from pack one here and we're going to import it and just see how it uh, looks next to it. So we'll double click on pack one. Just make sure you've uh, associated your pack explorer and go progs. And there it is, B underscore G key .mdl. So we'll copy paste this over, make sure not to just drag it because otherwise it'll take it out of this uh, pack file and we'll break your game. Don't want that. So now that we've got this here, I'm just going to copy the directory and we will import Quake MDL. So I'm already here, but you just need to go to your Quake directory and then we'll search B underscore G key. Lovely. So then import MDL. And as you can see, we're already pretty decently sized. Um, obviously the medieval key is going to be a bit wider and such. So we're just going to scale it down until our key is pretty similar size. So now going along with the model scale, you'll also see that the texture set, uh, textile density is way too high on this model. Um, this is a pixel here, and that is almost as big as one of these clusters of pixels on this side. So we're just going to need to scale it down somewhat. So to do that, we're just going to go up here again. Make sure if you have an image selected that you have unlinked it. And we'll just click new image and then change our width from something. Uh, so quite usually our keys are about 64 by 64. Uh, you can go a bit higher than that if you'd like. So 64, 64, but you can try, you know, 96, 128, uh, as long as you're happy with the textile density. One thing to keep in mind though, is that Quake textures can only be a certain height. So I usually don't go over to, I think it's 224. I will put a text up in this video to actually tell you what the amount is. And that is only on the height, so it can be any width you like, and that's uh, exploitable for much larger textures. So I'm going to set mine as 64 by 64. We'll change this to test 64. Make sure it's on color grid. And now I'm going to select my model because we haven't actually applied the new material to the to, to like the actual output of this model. So I'm gonna click the click our model, hit this little drop down, and then go to test 64. Now let's zoom in on here. Yeah, they're way closer. These are a little bit tighter just because of the way that it is packed. So if we look over here, we go to the uh, which one is it? It's this one. You can see that even though this is a 64 by 64 is that the texture isn't packed as tight as ours is. So you can see that there's a lot of black space left out. Whereas here, ours is, yeah, it's pretty pretty tight comparative to that. So I'm just going to hide this one right here. And before we actually do anything with this, we might want to test how it would look like in game. So first of all, we need to make sure that we don't use this texture because the exporter will convert a lot of these into Fulbrights or the closest texture on the Quake palette, and it'll look quite ugly. So we're just gonna go up here again, unlink our data block, and then just create a blank color. So we go generate a type blank and change our color to something like a, like a pretty bright color, pretty bright gray. We'll change our texture to this one. And before we take off and bring this thing into Quake, we're going to go over to the texture painting tab now things are going to change quite a bit, but you don't even need to care about this viewport. So we're just going to go over here, scroll in into the top left hand corner, 
change it to a random color, let's say purple. Uh, press F to scale your brush in. Just do that until you've got a one pixel brush or so. Go up to this top left hand corner and just make sure it's a different color. The reason you need this for this texture to work is because of something Quakespasm does to shield itself from edge cases. So it will take the top left hand pixel and will treat that as a background color and we'll erase it from the model and make it dark. Obviously we don't want that right now, so we're going to keep this pixel up in the top left hand corner. So we're up to the bit I think we've all been waiting for. We're going to actually export this texture into Quake. So I'm going to go up into, make sure our model is selected, File, Export, MDL, and we're going to go into our Quake folder and make a new folder called Key Test, add a progs folder in there, and then name our key model B underscore G underscore key. Now, before you hit export model, make sure that we, on this right hand panel here, we select rotate as a flag. This will make the model spin as that is not something that's actually normal, uh, is, isn't intrinsic to it being a key. So we'll export that. And if you've done everything right, it should have just exported and nothing would have happened. However, this is the point where I assume a lot of people will have problems. So we're just going to merge all of our vertices, make sure that we don't have any, say, floating vertices or edges. Uh, those will cause problems in the export. Make sure that there are no double edges. Uh, merging will usually fix that. And that there are no inside faces in our model. As long as you've got all that done and this top left pixel colored in, there should be no problems. So I'm going to jump over and quake and we'll check out our model. All right, here in Quake, just going to press escape and get to the console. Type, that was reflex. Type game key test map, let's say E2M1, as that one's the one with the gold key in it for the first time. And there we go, the beautiful key. So now that we've actually seen our model in game and we know that it works, how are we going to make this model ours and kind of texture it up and make it all pretty? I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not very good at this part. Um, I know my workflow and it works well. However, the actual texturing part is not my uh, forte whatsoever. So I'm just going to show you how I would work on my models. And this workflow should work with a bunch of other programs as it is quite basic. It's mostly just importing a UV map. So we're going to import this as a uh, thing like overlaying on top of our image, and then we'll export it out to Blender and we'll just press a special bind and it'll show up on this. And then anytime you want to test it out in Quake, which I would recommend you doing frequently, you just import, uh, sorry, you just export using the same method I showed you before. So I'm going to open up Krita and I'll show you my workflow. So I'm just gonna make a new file the size should match your current texture size and everything else I don't really touch. So right here is where the fun begins. I'm going to go over into Blender, go into edit mode, make sure I've got all of my models selected and up to UV, I will then export UV layout. So this will give us a texture of the current UV map space. So I'm just going to drop this in my downloads folder and name it key UV, and now we'll jump back into Krita. And I'm just going to go to where my key UV is in my computer, and then drag it out into here, insert as new layer. Now, I'm not going to be exporting this, at least not at the end. So I'm just going to drop my opacity down, and I'm going to create a new filter layer. This makes it so that the model is always palletized to the Quake palette, so I can Make sure that there are no errant full brights or, you know, things like that. If you want full brights on your model, there is an option here. You can go and grab the palette file with the full brights in it and kind of mask that in, but that's a bit advanced and you won't need it for a key model anyway, unless you're doing some very interesting things. So yeah, beyond this, I would just say, try your best to kind of replicate what currently exists in the game. Um, I am not very good at it at all, so I'm not going to try and even give pointers, but uh, let's just show something to kind of give you the gist. So I'm going to paint this all up. This is all currently on the Quake palette. 
as before, I will drop in a color up in the top left hand corner just so my entire model isn't full dark. And then I'm going to export it as a PNG and just key texture. So there we go. Now, if I go back into Blender and I go up here to the UV editing workspace again, oh, where's our key going? It's over here. <laughs> and then I go open, go to downloads, and we'll go key texture. All right, lovely. There it is. And in our models materials, I'm going to go over here and just find our key texture. And there we go. I could export this out to Quake and just constantly keep iterating on this texture. So let's say if I made this background and I wanted to change it, change some of it to like a different color. Let's just change some of it. And now I'm going to export this you know, PNG into this uh, key underscore texture PNG here. Exporting that. Now all you need to do is go back into Blender, make sure that your key texture is loaded in your UV workspace, and then hit Alt R. And there you go. That will be reflected in Quake just the same way. And it is a very quick workflow for kind of just kind of figuring out and feeling out what you want from a model, exporting it into the file, and then you can you can see approximately how it would look in Quake before you export it again and see what it looks like. So with that, you should have everything you need to start your Quake modeling journey. Over the next few weeks, I'll be going over more complex aspects of Quake modeling, making everything from props and weapons to fully rigged and animated monsters. So if that interests you, I hope you'll subscribe and stick around since I have a lot planned for the future. But anyway, thanks for watching.